Hi, my name is Justin Shelf, and I'm the engineering lead at PatchMyPC. We develop a third-party patch management solution that integrates into System Center Configuration Manager. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up our software update compliance dashboards that are now available for free, regardless of whether you're a customer. We found that it could be quite challenging sometimes to really get an understanding of your overall software update compliance using the native reports in Config Manager. So in order to get our reports, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to our website, choose our SCUP catalog, set up documentation, and then set up using the publishing service that's now available. From here, we want to download the MSI file. Once the MSI is downloaded, we can go ahead and run that. Now, the MSI does have a requirement that WSUS does have to be installed, so you will want to make sure you run this on a server running WSUS, which will most likely be your software update point in Config Manager. So we'll go ahead and just do next and leave all the defaults for the installation. All right, we'll go ahead and launch and then choose yes on the UAC prompt. Once the publishing service has opened up, we can go to the advanced tab and there's a new option here called run report installer. So we'll go ahead and launch that wizard and it's going to prompt us for a few questions. The first one's going to be your site code. So we'll go ahead and enter our three character site code for configuration manager. The next is going to be your SQL server reporting server. So this is going to be your server that's running the uh, SSRS instance for your config manager reporting point. So in our case, that's going to be running on a machine called SCCM. So that looks good. The next is going to be the folder name that you want to upload the reports into. So we're going to upload the reports into your config manager underscore site code folder. That's going to be where all your SCCM reports are also placed. So the default option is just patch my PC reports. The next one, we need to define whether our report manager and a report so server uh, folder name. So you can verify this. We, we put reports and report server, which are the default names for any SSRS installation. So if you open your reporting services configuration manager, this is where you can verify the service URL. So we can see it's that default report server. And you can also verify your web portal URL, and we can verify that's reports. So in our case, the default options here should be fine, but if you were using something custom, you would want to change those two options. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and click Start Report Install. This is going to launch a PowerShell script that's going to automatically change the URLs to match your site code and then automatically upload those to your site folder in SQL Reporting Services. So we can see here that if we go back a folder, we can see that that folder got automatically created within our Config Manager folder. So all the security levels should automatically get set whenever the reporting instance runs through our uh, component in Config Manager. So we can see that folder automatically got created. What's nice about this, if we jump over to our console and click on the reports and refresh that, we should now see the patch my PC folder is showing up directly in our console as well. Um, let me go to the reports here and refresh it here. So now we can see that patch my PC reports and we could actually run it directly from your console if you wanted to. Um, in this video, what I'll do is I'll just jump back over to Internet Explorer, which was automatically opened. So we'll go ahead and launch the first dashboard that will be helpful for you. So these reports were originally created by Gary Simmons, a Microsoft consultant who allowed us to go ahead and create customizations. So we've done things like adding support for Windows 10 and Server 2016 as well as a few bug fixes and feature improvements. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and uh, get rid of that so we have more space here, and we'll make it full screen. So the first section that we're gonna see in the first dashboard is gonna be the number of workstations and servers that we manage. So this is gonna be machines that have done a software update point scan within the last 14 days. So we can see we have six machines total, two Windows 7, two Windows 8, and two Windows 10 devices. We get the same type of data for the servers as well. So we can see that we have a total of four servers all running Server 2016. Next, we're going to show you the software update compliance by month for all your workstations as well as all your servers. So if we went ahead and looked, we can see we're pretty compliant for the previous nine months. 
But once we start getting into the most recent three months, we can see that our compliance numbers have gone down a little bit and they're the lowest percentage in the current month, which would make sense because we just published some updates. The number down here, 291, this is gonna be the number of updates that are either installed or applicable or required on devices within your environment. Of those 291 instances of updates needing to be installed that are either installed or required, we're 74% compliance. Now, if we break into that month, that's gonna sort by updates required on the most number of machines for that month. So for example, we can see that uh, Dropbox here, this top update is required on six devices. If we actually drill into that update, that's gonna link us out to one of the native reports that are uh, in Config Manager, and then we could break into that specific update and see information about those six machines that actually need the update, for example. So jumping back to the dashboard, we give you the same type of data for servers. So if you wanted to see compliance by month for servers, you could certainly drill into that as well. The next section is gonna be compliance for workstations uh, and then different charts. So the first one is gonna be overall compliance. So this chart is gonna show you for your workstations by operating system. So we can see Windows 10, Windows 7, and Windows 8. How many of those devices are compliant with all your updates? So in our case, none of our workstations of the six are compliant with all our updates. We could then drill into that report and say, see the two Windows 10 devices that are not compliant, and then we could get information about the number of required updates for both of them, those machines. We could then drill into that specific device if you wanted to see uh, what updates are missing on that device. So back in our dashboard, the next report we have here for workstations is gonna be how many workstations are missing a specific range of updates. So for example, we can see how many workstations are missing between one to 10 updates, 11 through 25 updates, 26 through 50 updates, or 50 or more updates. So in our case, we have one workstation missing between one to 10, four workstations missing between 11 to 25, and then one missing between 26 and 50 updates. So if we wanna drill into the 11 through 25, that's gonna show us what specific workstations here are missing uh, that range of updates and how many updates they're missing, and then you could drill into each device if you needed. The next update is gonna show us overall compliance by month for the last six months. So this is gonna show us by OS, so we can see Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, how many of your machines are compliant with 100% of the updates available for that month within your environment. So for example, we can see that for the month of May, April, and March, all our workstations are compliant with all updates released in that month. We can now see with June, we have Windows 10, we're only at 50% compliance. So that means one Windows 10 device is compliant for all updates that month, and then one Windows 10 device is not. We can then drill into all the updates that month and then break into each update, and that will show us what Windows 10 devices are not compliant for updates released that month. And then the next is gonna be how many updates are missing at least one update by month by OS. So for example, we can see that we have uh, one Windows 10 device for the month of June missing at least one update. Same thing for July. If we break into that month, we're gonna show you what machines are missing how many updates for that month. So that's really the first dashboard. If we, if we keep going down, you're gonna get the same type of dashboards for the servers as well. Now, if you wanted, we could also filter out servers or workstations. So in our case, say we only wanted to see workstations. So I'm gonna filter by the all workstations collection and reload this report. And what that will do, that will filter out all the workstation graphs or all the server graphs that is. So for example, now we can see we're only seeing the workstation compliance and the compliance for workstation for all the graphs. And now the server uh, charts are completely uh, hidden. So going back to our reports, the second dashboard is gonna be the same as the first, except it's only gonna show you compliance for third-party updates. The third one, this is gonna allow you to view different compliance data based on specific software update groups. So for example, if we wanted to look at our third-party software update group, 
we could click view report. All right, so we'll hide that. And now here we can see data. Similar thing, we're gonna show you the different number of uh, OSs that we manage uh, for that are scanning in for these updates. We're then gonna show you how many updates are missing a specific range of updates, similar to the uh, other report that we ran. Okay. And now we're gonna show you the overall compliance for updates within that specific software update group that you chose. So for all the updates within that third-party group, of the installed and required counts for all those updates, we can see that we're 87% compliant for our devices. Next, we're gonna break out for updates released uh, within a specific month for that update group, what's our compliance? So for example, we can see that we're 71% compliant for the month of August, 93% compliant for the month of July, and 89% compliant for the month of June. Now within each of these months, you can see you have two numbers under there. The 77 count, that's gonna be the number of updates that are applicable for that month. So that's gonna be updates that are either installed or required. Of those 77 instances of updates, we're 71% compliant uh, for those updates. The number under that is gonna be the total number of unique computers that have updates applicable for that month. So for example, say we wanted to drill into the uh, month of August, we can see that of those, uh, we have uh, 185 updates installed and we have around 70 that are needed. So this will break us in for updates released within that month. And then we could get different data about the number of required updates, drill into specific updates that will take us out to different reports. All right, so that looks good. Um, that's the two dashboards that I'll go over today in the video, but there are some additional ones here. We can see we have two other reports that could be helpful for you. Um, but what I'll do for this video, I think we'll wrap it up there, but I will mention our website. You can get information about the software update reports. Uh, we'll include a link in this in the video description, but it will basically go through each of these dashboards, um, including all these reports, and give you information about that report, what items are clickable within the reports, and what they all mean. So I hope this video was helpful for you. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, we definitely love to take that. We do continue to keep improving the reports as we release updates to our publishing service. Thank you for watching.